This is Apple Music. I am Nadeska right now catching up with Big Sean. Album number five, Detroit 2, is out right now. Five. Five. That's crazy. Whoa. Look, it's nice to catch up with you. As I was digging through my email today, I realized we were actually trying to do this interview as far back as April. And it feels like a lifetime has happened since then. So I love that on this project, we get to hear a lot about your personal ups and downs. But I feel like for the past five months, collectively, we've all been going through it. And I wonder just personally how you've been coping with everything happening in the world. It's been a time of like a lot of self-reflection, a lot of going, exploring inner space. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to outer space in the world. So it's definitely been a, a very big adjustment and it goes to show how unstoppable the world is and how, how powerful the universe and the world is. You know what I'm saying? It's like all the plans we had, like I was about to put my album out then and, you know, do Coachella and do all these things and festivals and stuff. And it just, everything shifted like that. And nobody could do anything about it. You know, it's something that we all went through together though. So I feel like it's something that's been unifying us all in a way. You know, and also giving us an opportunity for the ones who aren't going through tragedy right now as far as, like, being sick. You know, I have a lot of friends who had COVID who had to deal with that and, it, and hadn't dealt with it for months. But it's been a time of, like, self-exploration and, you know, tuning everything out and focusing on yourself. But as far as the tragedy goes, it has been a lot of tragedy. It has been a lot of, you know, losses. It has been a lot of pain, a lot of surprises. You know, uh, one of the things that it taught me is that you can't, ever, ever since Nipsey died, it's like, it affected me so deep because me and him kept talking and texting and being like, yo, oh man, like, all right, let's get up soon, let's get up this, and it did, and you know, I don't wanna go too deep into it, but it just, it shows you that nothing is guaranteed. So you got to go for it. You got to do it right now, you know? You know, I do want to get deep into it at some points because one of my favorite songs on the project, you touch on relationships and that's something I definitely want to talk to you about. I think the more you live and the more you experience and the more you work, the more you realize that relationships really are just the most important thing in your life. But before we get to that, um, as you're rolling out Detroit 2, uh, there's a little bit of nostalgia, which I think is very comforting to all of us. You know, you sort of rolling out these little visual previews, just like you did eight years ago. Uh, and I remember that point that you dropped the mixtape. That was such a big moment coming off a great debut album. I think Mercy was going crazy at the time. Click was coming up yeah. soon. There was a lot happening in your career. So I'm wondering, thinking back to the moment that you dropped the tape, which I think we're releasing this almost exactly eight years to the day. How are you feeling yeah. then? And does anything feel similar in your life or your career at this moment? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that's why I called it Detroit too, because it felt like in a way I was returning back to like, definitely the essence of myself, but I've been, I, I have been already taking time to explore myself and to like dive deep into my head because I felt like I had some issues going on. You know, I felt like I had some, felt, I felt broken inside, you know? I felt like I had maxed out and I was wiped out and I was burnt out. And I didn't know how to deal with it. Nobody else around me knew how to deal with it. So I just like took the time to myself, you know? I definitely started communicating better, started doing therapy, started doing these things to help me because I realized that, you know, your mind, your brain, your feelings, those are important things. Your brain is a muscle too. I have been strengthening a lot of other things, but not that muscle of my brain as far as like taking care of it, taking care of myself. So <clears throat> I found myself at a point where I just, I felt like I started all over. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I had to break down myself, lay a new foundation and take the best parts of myself that I had and build, and build it stronger. You know what I'm saying? Build it more efficient and build it, build it with happiness. And as I was making an album, I was returning to my passion of music because I feel like I lost it for a little bit. You know, I wasn't inspired. I was making music that wasn't all the way inspired, not liking the things I came up with. And then all of a sudden, the inspiration came back. 
And it reminded me when I was recording my mixtapes. It reminded me when I was recording Finally Famous Volume 3. It reminded me when I was recording Detroit, the mixtape. Um, and I was spending a lot, I've been spending a lot of time back home in Detroit too. And it just felt like I always wanted to do a sequel to that mixtape because I felt like it was an album. You know what I mean? And I felt like it never got as just due because it was a mixtape, but it was really an album for me. You know, so in a way, it's like I'm returning to the essence of myself, new and improved. You know, so I feel like the Detroit 2 meaning, you know, and the city right now is popping. It's like going through a whole renaissance. Besides the COVID and everything, it's like it's, it's the most beautiful, the most rich it's ever been. And, um, you know, it made me who I am. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to put it on display. Yo, I love it. When you drop Deep Reverence, I was really happy to hear you say that you're back and you're ready for another 10 year run because all of the things that you just described as a fan, it was pretty obvious. You could hear that even in a song like No More Interviews, it sounded like you were going through a lot and it made sense. You're what, 10 years in, 10 years plus at this point. So it's really mm -hmm. good to hear that you've worked through all of that and now you're back making music that you're happy about. And you've also described Detroit as a mentality, right? Is there a way for you yeah. to articulate what that mentality is? Yeah, because the mentality of Detroit is it's a city that, you know, when you think back to the history of Detroit, you know, the roots are so deep as far as the music, as far as the um, historical aspects of it. So when I say it's a mentality, Detroit is a place where nothing was ever handed to us. We'll go through the worst situations ever. We'll be bank only city to be bankrupt in America. We the blackest city in America. You know, we're chocolate city. And a lot of opportunities were never given to us. Like, I came up around people and, you know, where I'm from, where we really had to get it. And no matter what was happening, we, even if there were no jobs, we had to make it work. We had to survive. So to me, that's that mentality that I feel like when you come from the city and people who know people from Detroit, they all have a similar mentality. Like, they never are too good for anything. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I for sure have slept on floors. I for sure have slept i remember being on the road with wale and following his tour bus because he there was no money you know he was like i don't have any money to give you but you can come open up for me because i, I believe in you so you got to understand one of my homies from the d took his mama's suv chrysler i forgot what it's called suv now we packed in there we barely afford a hotel room sometimes we sleeping in the car Sometimes we all sleeping in the room. Sometimes, you know, I'll sleep in the bed every night. Sometimes I'll let my homie get to bed because it's like there's only one bed in there. You know, I'll sleep in a, in a tub. I'll put a blanket in a tub, sleep in a tub. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to need him to drive 12 hours. You know what I mean? So it was just like you got to understand that the mentality that we had was get it by any means, you know? Just like uh, by any means necessary. That's Detroit Red. You know what I mean? That's that mentality. That's one of the things that stands out to me a lot in your early albums and mixtapes. I feel like you were always having a good time, having fun, because you worked so hard to get all of those things, right? Um, yeah. But then we've also heard you talk about the fact that you felt like at some point you were just going so hard that you didn't have a chance to enjoy life. And that could burn anyone out. But then on Harder Than My Demons, it's mm -hmm. nice to hear you shift it to now, not just working hard, but working smart. What does working smarter mean to you at this point in your career? Working smarter means a lot of things in, in my career right now. It means that you work based on how you feel. You know what I'm saying? And if your heart is in something... You may feel like working on it all day and all night, right? But if you're really in tune with yourself, there are times where before, if I didn't feel like doing something, I would still do it because I felt like that's what I was supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? I felt like it was the job. I got to be doing it. But really, I've learned that if I feel like going to the gun range or going to play basketball or going to the movies or going to chill, or right, that really made help me the next time I'm in the studio and the work that I spent 16 hours on, I make a come back and do it in 30 minutes, for real. You know, when you, when you feel like it. So you got to pay attention to your feelings. And, you know, I think when you come from a place like we all come from of not having that many opportunities of, you know, being the first of, in our circles to get on, right, or to do something that's not regular, 
that it's like, oh, you got to stay on their necks. You, you know, it's that man t- mentality of like, you got to stay hot. You got to you gotta keep going. You can't get lazy. But, and I think that used to ruin the idea of really just paying attention to how I feel and really enjoying it. That's a very good point. Uh, I love Wale and I love that you guys still have a relationship and that he's on this album, but I've had a bone to pick with him for No Days Off, right? He was the biggest yeah. supporter waving the flag for No Days Off. And at a certain point, like 10 years in, you're like, nah, I would love a couple of days off just to reset and figure out if I'm even going, you know, in the right direction. So how have you learned and how long did it take you to learn just to take care of yourself? Like in this new music, I love that you're opening up. It's okay that you don't love to do a lot of interviews, that you don't like to be super public facing, but you're going through a lot of things that a lot of us have been going through, dealing with a lot of anxiety and feeling depressed and upset and not really knowing how to sort through those emotions. So um, when did you finally realize that you just needed to invest that time in taking care of you? When I had no other choice. When I tried to, like, I felt like I was broken. I would try and be in the studio. I couldn't think of anything. I would try to feel good and I couldn't feel good and I feel like if you do anything for 10 years right or I mean for me it was longer that was like how long I've been professionally doing it but I've been rapping since I was 11 you know what I'm saying that's what I that's what I said I wanted to be when I was 11 and that was when I I wrote my first rap and wrapped it from my mom she was the first person I rapped to and when you do anything for 10 years plus whether it's like even if you're a manager at a fast food restaurant, if you're flipping burgers for 10 years, if you're a lawyer, if you're a musician, if you're a journalist, you know, it, it might, you might lose some of that passion. You might lose some of that fire for it. You know, you might be ready either for something else or, in my case, I just had to rediscover it, you know? And I didn't, I, at one point I thought I was done. I thought I was like, maybe I shouldn't even be doing music anymore. Maybe I did it and that's it. But then I was like, no, nah, once I started taking care of myself, I started thinking of things differently. I started approaching songs differently. And I had that hunger back. You know, I was hungry. On, I'm hungry on these songs. Like on that song with Nip, on the song with Wayne, it's like I'm, I'm just hungry. And I feel like I got a lot to prove to myself, you know, to my, my that ele- elevating yourself in all aspects can, can be spread to the world. Because I feel like my life purpose is inspiration to inspire. So that's what I'm here for. And I feel like the best way I can do that right now is through my music. 